If you use email marketing to stay in touch with your prospects and your customers, then this is the most important video that you'll watch all year because Yahoo and Gmail have both just rolled out some new verification requirements for you and I as email marketers. We have to prove that we're in control of the domains that we're sending emails from. So there's a few steps that you have to take, and I'm going to show you step-by-step step how to do this in a couple of interfaces. I've got a little checklist for you that you're going to be able to follow to keep you on track and know you might be using a different system that I've recommended or a different system than I personally use. There's going to be a similar way to do this on whatever platform you're on, but this video is just going to give you that overview to help you get confidence in exactly what you need to do. So there's five steps. First, you need to verify your name at your domain.com. You do need to be sending from your email address or from your own domain name, right? No Gmail account sendings. And then we need to add these three records at the domain name level, a DKIM, a DMARC, and a an SPF record. And we need to do that to prove. So when you're sending a bulk email from a Weber, for example, but that email is coming from your domain.com, we need to prove at the domain level that a Weber has a legal right, the authority to send emails as you without these, you will be looked upon as spam as if you're trying to send email from an address that you don't have the legal right to send that from. So how do we prove that we have the right to send it? We go in and set all of this up. And then finally, there's a tool it's a free tool called postmasters.google.com. You can get this set up so you can monitor because one of the big things that they want to see Gmail specifically is they want to see you keep your spam rate below 3%. Now your email marketing system probably tells you what your spam rate is, but I want Google's numbers directly and I'll show you how to find that. So let's actually jump right in. Now I've recommended for years that you get started with a Weber. A Weber has the best customer support in the game. It's milesbeckler.com forward slash a Weber is my affiliate link. And on my main navigation on my website, there is a link that says how to start your list and I walk you step by step through every step in the process of getting started. Now, a Weber has this blog post here. So if you Google a Weber, how to comply with Google and Yahoo sending requirements, you'll find it. I'll link to it in the description of the video as well. Um, it's got all the stuff you need to do. But if we scroll down to the get started right here, you say log into a Weber, go to my account and click on domains and addresses, which I have open right here. So the first thing we need to do is verify. Okay, so you can see I have this miles at DIY sales funnel email. This is what I would want to send from, but I need to verify it. To do this, I literally just click resend verification here. It sends that verification to my email address, and then I go click the link inside of that email address itself. Now, from here, the other thing is I'm going to click that little gear wheel, and this gets me all of the different records that I have to add. Okay, so these are the C name records here, and then this is the DMARC policy here. Again, we got the C name records. Oh, excuse me, the DKIM and the DMARC. Now, the SPF record we'll talk about separately here. AWeber doesn't require you to add it. Many others do. AWeber manages that for you, but we're going to go through that separately. So first, let's go into this DKIM record. So you can see here, once we've verified our email address, it tells us exactly what we need to have. There's a type, it's a C name record, there's the name, and there's the value. And we just need to go set this up. So I'm inside of my control panel, okay? This is my web hosting control panel that I've logged into for this domain. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down to the zone editor under domains. This is where I'm able to go in and edit and manage. And I'm just going to click on this top one. Ignore this lower one. This was just a testing domain when I was um, building out a new theme. So right here, I'm just going to click on manage for the main domain. Now I am looking at all of the DNS record, okay, domain name services records. And you can see over here on the right, I've got add record, I've got a drop down, I've got the TXT, and I've got the C name record. They even actually have a DMARC one for me there. So let's let's go see how you do this. First, we need a C name record with this as the host. I can click to copy. So let's go set up a new ad record and we're going to do a C name record here. And the zone name is the first part. So I paste that in here and then I go back and I'm going to take the value of this one and I'm going to paste that in here. And that's the record. And I save that record. 
and I've literally just added the first one. Now I need to go do that over and over. Okay, I'm not gonna do that here with you. You would do all three of these and you would get them in. You know you've got them in. You can scroll to the bottom and it'll show you. This is what I added in. It adds on my domain here and then this is the actual value. So I would have those three down here. Then the next step for me to do is to go in here and get this text record set up for the DMARC. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into here and even though this tells me I have a DMARC record, I'm just gonna add a text record because I'm really big on following the exact instructions that they give me. So for the zone name, I'm gonna paste that in and it's just DMARC. The record is text and then I'm gonna take this over here. I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna go back to my zone editor. I'm gonna paste that in and voila, I'm gonna save that record. So now, as long as you have gone through all of these and all of this one here, you'd be able to refresh status and it's obviously not gonna show me that all of them are installed because I only installed one of them. Ultimately, keep going until you get all of them installed. Now, in Aweber specifically, they say that you do not need to update your domain's SPF record because they manage it for you. Personally, I like having that in there. So what you can do to actually set this up is you can take this and you can taste text it in, excuse me, you can paste it in as a text record, right? So I can go in, I can add a record, I can add a text record. I'm gonna put that there and I think, ooh, what would I put as that? Hmm, I don't actually know. We might learn that in the next part, but we're getting stumped here and we're moving on. So with Aweber, since they don't require it, they don't give you the first part of the record, right? So if you know what I mean, there's a zone name that you would need to put in here and then the SPF. I think I would just put in SPF, but we're gonna look at how this works on Active Campaign as well. So on Active Campaign, they have this really handy tool. It's the DKIM SPF DMARC verification tool. Link to this will be below. You can obviously Google Active Campaign in this. You would only be using this if you're using Active Campaign. You put in your address down here and you search for it. So this is one that's just going to show if and how we actually do have all of these records in place correctly. You can see I've got it all set up for mine. You might be wondering, Miles, why do you recommend Aweber when you use Active Campaign? So Active Campaign allows me to run some very, very uh, advanced automations that actually manage a few of my membership websites. It is not a beginner friendly tool. It's not necessarily a tool I would recommend for you if you're under 30 or 40,000 subscribers. Aweber is definitely the place to go. Um, but it is kind of personal preference and you might even be on a different program or a different platform. So you just need to figure out where to get that content yourself. Um, since I don't see my SPF record, I'm going to go figure out exactly what to put in there. So I'm going to pause this video and I'll be right back with you. And it's mildly hilarious. You just leave it blank. So we save this record as is, or I think I put my domain here. So I'll put DIY sales funnel.com and then I'll save the record there. Um, but there's actually no record beyond just the name itself. So all it needs to be is doisalesfunnel.com and then my SPF. So at this point, obviously, if I had put all three of these in for Aweber, one, two, three, then my DMARC and then my SPF, I am above and beyond making sure that I've got all of this set up here. Um, it's the same stuff, but a little bit different inside of Active Campaign. You can see they actually give you um, the SPF record. They actually say what the DMARC is. It's pretty much the same stuff. They just have a little bit different um, includes. Like there's, they have a different EMS D1. That's the actual active web a Weber thing. This is all code based stuff. Okay. This is stuff. You don't need to know what it does. You don't need to know why it does what it does. You just need to know how to get the right pieces in the right place. And then you go verify yourself and then you're all set up. Okay. So at this point we have accomplished the first four things already. It was that easy to get all of this done. We did it here in minutes on this video. The last thing I want you to do is go to postmasters.google.com and get this set up for your domain. So I'm here inside of Google Postmasters tool. Okay. And once you get it set up, you just click on the domain and it'll load this page. And you can see I've got a few different things that I can monitor with my email address, but the spam rate is the key one. And you can see right here that on February 5th, which I sent out an email that day, um, my spam rate went up to 0.1%. That's fine. Gmail wants us to be under 0.3%. And you can see my user spam rate is close to zero. It's hovering at or around zero or 0.1%. So that's good. If I see this thing going up to a half percent, this means I am in the, I am in the danger zone. And this means for some reason, there's a high percentage of people who I'm sending emails to who are clicking the report spam link inside of their email dashboard. So that means I'm either 
clickbaiting them. I'm over aggressively abusing the right and the privilege to market them. I'm not sending them what they expected. I'm not sending them what they want. This is where you would want to go in and actually start to scrub your email list to make sure that you are actually only mailing those people who want to hear from you. I do have videos that teach you how to scrub your list on Aweber here on the channel. I'll put links to that down below. You can always search here on YouTube, Miles Beckler, email marketing, Miles Beckler, Aweber, how to scrub a list, all those kinds of phrases. I got 800 videos with everything in there, but now you know exactly what you need to do in order to get your email marketing system connected up appropriately with your domain name. So Gmail and Yahoo look at you as a verified email sender, which will help you get into the inbox so you can get more attention, you can get more clicks, and you can make more money with your email marketing. I hope this video has been helpful. This is one of those boring technical videos that will not work in the algorithm. So if you give me a thumbs up and a like and a comment, I really would appreciate it to help me get any algorithm mojo that I possibly can out of this video. This is not a viral video, but it is absolutely something that's necessary for you and for all of the other internet marketers who I've been training for over eight years here with this YouTube training, uh, with this YouTube channel. I've been training you guys on these videos. So this is one of those things that you got to roll up your sleeves and get it done. If you have questions about how do I add these records, I don't know where to get my DNS zone record, email the support team at your web host. And if you don't know where to get those records from inside of your email dashboard system, that's where you go reach out to their support. And that's why I recommend Aweber as my number one email marketing system, because they got the best support in the industry 24 7 365. They're there to help you. I hope this has been helpful. Thanks. And I'll see you on the next video.